I'm here to hunt kimono. I'm still not sure what weapon I'm going to be using. What's that? You'll never see me coming with this! Swah, 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 swah! What weapon is right for me in Wild Hearts is the question that a lot of you are going to be asking yourselves if you are planning on playing the game when it eventually releases, either tomorrow or the day after, depending on when I release this video, and which time zone you happen to reside in, because that also kind of complicates things. But uh, in today's video, I'm going to be trying to answer that question to the best of my ability. There's already a live stream on the channel that shows gameplay from all of the different weapons, but it can be kind of messy to understand how the weapons operate within a hunt environment. So today we're going to be focusing on using the training dummy for me to show you the movesets that you can expect from each of these weapons. And then if you want to see them in a hunt, you can go to the live stream and you can check out some gameplay there so that you get some further uh, you know, feedback on how that weapon kind of works, right? Now, I want us to do an interesting exercise here. I'm going to be naming all of the weapon types that Wild Hearts has, and I'm going to be showing you the pictures of them here in my inventory that you can see right now. And I want you to remember which weapon you think is going to be the one that's going to be right up your alley. And then after you watch the video, I want you to let me know in the comments if that opinion remained, or if you were like, you know what, I was thinking about this weapon, but after watching your video, I actually ended up liking this one much better, because some of these weapons actually surprised me quite a bit when I started playing the game. So, let's go through it. We're going to be starting things off with the Karakuri Katana here. Uh, this is the first weapon that you have access to. As a matter of fact, the very first hunt in the game needs to be done with the Karakuri Katana. And just another little bit of a tip. Whenever you try out a new weapon, something that I would most definitely recommend is walk up to the training dummy. The first training dummy that you have access to doesn't even have this manual, just straight up default to attack tutorials on. But you can pick up any weapon that you want. You turn on attack tutorials, you hit start, and the training dummy actually gives you prompts for what you can do that kind of teaches you the very basic basics of the weapon itself and it is very useful if you are trying out a new weapon i already mentioned this in my beginner's guide video but it is just something that i want to reinforce because trust me i made a massive mistake if you've been watching the uh the blind playthrough at the very beginning of the game i made a massive mistake i played hammer and i was playing it completely wrong and i failed the second quest twice <laughs> which is i guess it made for some interesting content but still it is something that i would save you from anyway let me go ahead and uh, change the training method because we don't actually need the attack tutorials here. So, let's get started. How does the um, how does the Karakuri Katana work? Well, the Karakuri Katana, in this game, in my opinion, it's almost like dual blades in Monster Hunter. So basically, you're going to have your basic combos on square, which does this. It's like a five-piece combo. Then you have another combo on triangle, which is kind of like a combo that also moves you. Now, this combo also has a secret that Fighting Cowboy taught me because I didn't realize it. If you spam the last triangle hit, you can actually hit multiple times. Like, which is pretty wild. Now, this also has an R2 attack, which does this thrust thing, and then does this attack, and then it does this. And then you can kind of like interweave these combos together. You know, you can swap around and let go. Oh, I can go square and then triangle and then R2. Or I can go square and R2. But as you can see, it is a lot about hitting the monster multiple times. Now you guys are like, okay, so what's special about the weapon? Well, above our health gauge there at the bottom left-hand side, you'll notice that there is a blue gauge. That is a gauge that basically unlocks uh, something special about the Karakuri Katana. If you notice the blade which unfortunately I can't zoom into it very properly. But if you notice, it almost looks like it's segmented. That's because it's a chain blade. So once you fill up that energy gauge, you can press uh, your right trigger and any of the attack buttons, and it becomes a chain sword. And now, it deals way more damage. It's almost like demon mode in dual blades. But yeah, you can go pretty wild. Like, watch this. And then you do this special... Triangle slam combo. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> that 
is the Karakuri Katana. And these are like the basics of what you can expect if you choose to use this weapon. There's more to it naturally, it also has jumping attacks. And there's a couple of more tricks that you can do, but this is the Karakuri Katana. Now, let's go ahead and swap things up. We are gonna go for the Nodachi next. Now, the, the Nodachi, obviously, if you just look at it, you're like, oh, that's a great sword. Yep, that, that's pretty much what it is. You go on to the monster, you can smack it with regular attacks, but obviously your objective... Oops, I forgot to actually turn on training. Every time I swap weapons, I have to turn on training. My bad. My bad, team. Okay, as I was saying, you can basically go up to the monster, press square, do regular attacks. Uh, your triangle attack is going to be more of a positional attack, so like when you press it... Your character kind of moves a little bit, so you can kind of come in from a distance and go, yush, right? Now, the thing about the greatsword naturally is going to be about charging, right? So you hold down on your trigger, you go like, uh, 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 and then you like unleash. Boom. But there's a little bit more to it than that because, you know, just running around charging. For starters, when you run around, the charge is really slow. If you stand still, it goes a little bit faster. But on top of it, there's also the fact that you can attack whilst charging, which again was something that I learned from Fighting Cowboy that I had no idea you could do. But basically, you hold on your charge button and then you press square or triangle and it retains your charge. And it also charges, not only it retains your charge, it charges up faster. So you're basically incentivized to do it, and you can get to your charge attack much faster. But obviously this is one of those weapons that's about big payoffs. It also has a jumping attack, which hits multiple times, and that's alright, it's whatever if you want to do that. But one special tip that I would give to you if you're planning on playing Dino Dachi is use springs. Now there's a Karakuri, which is a spring. Which you can access by pressing left bumper and circle by default, but you can change this. And then if you jump on it, the interesting thing about springs is that they recover your stamina. So notice how your stamina drains, which is that little orange thing next to our character's face right now. And as that stamina is draining, if you jump forward through here, you gain a little bit of stamina. So making effective use of uh, springs is going to be essential for you to use this weapon. Otherwise, you're going to be constantly running into stamina problems. Like, look look how long I'm holding this charge just from, like, using the spring. Boink. Still holding the charge. I'm going to use the spring again. Boink. Still holding the charge. And do remember, you can just, like, place down springs dynamically. So, like, I can fully recharge my stamina so long as I have enough karakuri. Look at this. I can go around the whole goddamn battlefield whilst... Oh, wait, I lost my charge at some point. Oops. The game got tired, I guess. I guess there is a limit to how long you can hold your charge. It's not just about stamina. But anyway, yeah, that's kind of like the point of this weapon. You charge it up, you use special attacks to get in there and attack the... Um, oh, I forgot to turn it on again. You use your, your attacks to basically charge up your gauge. You get in there, and then you unleash the big money winner. Now, don't pay attention to damage values all that much because some of the weapons that I'll be using are going to have, you know, they're going to be crafted weapons, whereas the Nodachi, because I don't really play it, it's not really one of my crafted weapons. So you really shouldn't pay too much attention to the damage numbers, but just know Nodachi deals a significant amount of damage. It's not the biggest damage hit. That one's reserved to the final weapon, which I'll show you, but still, it's a beefy weapon and it's a fun weapon to play if you enjoy that type of playstyle. Now, Let's go ahead and check out one of my favorite weapons, which is the Maul. Now, the Maul is the hammer. And the hammer is actually really fun. I really like the hammer. Might be my favorite weapon. Still don't know because I also really like the bladed Wagasa. But, bonk to the monster's face, right? You can do bonks. This has stunning potential, like weapons have damage types, so this is blunt damage. There's blunt damage, slash damage, piercing damage. Two weapons I've shown you so far were slash damage. This one is blunt damage, and it can stun monsters. But you're like, okay, so you have this combo, which is just like a three-button combo. It doesn't deal that much damage, deals a little bit of damage, good opening, right? Then you have this one, which jumps and gets you into position, kind of. And then you have something that's going to be very familiar to Monster Hunter players. Which is something very similar to the spinning bludgeon, right? But the 
essence of the hammer is not this. And this is the reason why I failed the second quest twice. Because I tried killing a monster doing just this. Oh yeah, there's also a spinning attack, which if you hold down a uh, right trigger, he does this. Which should also be fairly familiar, with the exception that in this one, it also extends. Oh no, I broke my jumping platforms! Yeah, th this attack just like breaks everything. And if you spend all of your stamina, it ends like that. But only if you spend, maybe not all of your stamina, but like two gauges of stamina. That's the only way to get it to finish like that. So... How do you actually play Hammer? Hammer's about timing. Think of like, if you've ever played Sword and Shield and Monster Hunter, think of it like Perfect Rush. So every time that you hit an attack, notice how there's like an orange flash at the end of it. Every attack the Hammer does has an orange flash. So those orange flashes are the trigger for you to go ahead and press your right trigger button because that is going to cause the Hammer to extend like that. And then after you extend, the next hit is going to deal more damage. Then you can extend it one more time, and you can press it again, and BOOM! Big bonk! Big bonk! Big fun! Bonk! And that's what you do with a hammer, but it requires precise timing. So if you're not into using precise timing, you're probably not going to have a good time. It also has another combo that you can do, which you can basically do this, then stretch it, then go into the air, and then stretch it again, stretch it again. You can repeat that combo multiple times, it's just the position that I have in here is not great. Bonk. 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 And you can keep going. And there, there's even one more that I can show you. Just, just if you want to laugh your asses off, there's one more that I'll show you. Which is this. Watch. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I actually got bumped. But that one always finishes with a, a big hammer down at the end. It's just kind of wonky because of where I placed that uh, that bear. See? It goes like this. Ba bam 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 ba bam 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 And then at the end... Boom. Still, the square combo deals the most damage. Hammer is very satisfying. I swear by it. I love it. But if you don't have the timing, which again, you do need timing to perform this stuff. If you don't have the timing or the patience to learn the timing to do this, you're not going to have a good time. So that's the hammer. Now, let's check out some of the other weapons. Uh, I guess I should check out the bow at this point. Even though it's not a weapon that I personally enjoy that much, I'm sure that you guys would appreciate it. So, let's talk about the basics of the bow. Because the bow is, uh, yeah, it's actually got some pretty unique features to it. So let me go ahead and turn this dummy on. So the way the bow works is you have two stances. Right now, we're on the sideways stance. If you press square, you go to the vertical stance. So you switch between these two stances, and the idea is the sideways stance puts arrows in the monster right this is a sideways stance the other stance blows them up well you have to charge it before you get to blow it up see it blows up the other arrows right however the bow also has a system that is called the embolden system so i think it's called embolden i'm not sure whatever it's a buff that you do by pressing your y button or your triangle button your bow does this almost like applying a coating and then if you hold down your trigger while you have one charge, your character will pump a lot of arrows into the monster, which then you can obviously switch to this. Boom. They will deal more damage. Now, the other thing that you can also do is you can embolden twice, and that is going to completely change what the bow does. So you go one, two, and now when you, when you press the trigger, you get an arc shot that you have to aim that just rains a bunch of arrows on the monster, and then naturally, once again, you can swap stances and blow stuff up. Now, the thing here is, you can also embolden the vertical stance, or, you know, buff the vertical stance. So, like, let's say, for instance, we go, boom, and we fire a bunch of arrows, right? Don't ask me what the cap of arrows is, because I don't play a bow at all. But uh, then you do this, and now you embolden that. And then you can take a shot. Boom! Deals even more damage. And once again, just like the other mode, you can embolden vertical mode twice. Which fires an even more powerful arrow that also detonates everything. 
However, a recommended way to play, which I was uh, talking to Fighting Cowboy about as well. Me and Fighting Cowboy talked a lot about, um, you know, certain things that we discovered for certain weapons. Uh, a, a very interesting way that you can play bow is basically instead of constantly having to swap stances, because that can get a little bit annoying, swapping stances and boldening and doing all of these things. If you're just getting started with the bow, one of the things that you can do is just like, look, put a bunch of arrows into it, right? And then stack three boxes without even swapping stances. Jump on the boxes, fire, detonates the arrows, charges your bow, primes it for an arc shot, and you're still in this mode, and then you can once again jump onto the boxes, bounce, and boom! So, you know, this is some of the fancy stuff that you can do with bow. There's much more to it, but you know, the whole thing about it is basically firing regular arrows in one stance, and then swapping to a different stance, priming your bow, and blowing stuff up. That's the bow. Now, let's check out another one of my uh, my personal favorites. Because, like, if you actually look at my equipment here, you'll notice that I have, like... Let me sort these by weapon type sending. Oh, damn it. Then I instantly took it away. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you'll notice that I have one Karakuri Katana, which is the base version. One! Nodachi, which is the base version, and one bow, which is the base version, because I don't play these weapons. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six hammers, and one, two, three, four, five bladed wagasas. So let's talk about the bladed wagasa, the umbrella. Now, the umbrella is one of those weapons that was a complete surprise for me, because I saw the gameplay footage of the umbrella, and I was like, nah, nah, this ain't it, chief. I don't want it. Boy, was I wrong. Now, the bladed Wagasa actually relies on parrying. So whenever you press the right trigger, your character does this. And this is a parry. It has tight timing. So if you do not like parrying, you're not going to enjoy this weapon. Okay? You can play it without parrying, but it is not going to be optimal. Because, like, one of the good things about the weapon is that you can be attacking the monster in the middle of, like, a really big combo. And at any point in time, you could just, like, interrupt that combo with a parry. Like, you can draw parries out of nowhere. It's not like, oh, I gotta be attentive, here comes the big attack. No, it's like, no, I'm in the middle of my attacks, and then I parry. I can't parry right now, because I ran out of stamina. This is very much like the Nodachi, a weapon that you're gonna be relying on springs to recover your stamina, because you're gonna run out of stamina pretty fast if you are spamming parries, right? You saw that? Two parries, three parries, no more parries. So, you're gonna need to rely on the springs to recover your stamina as much as you possibly can. So keep that in mind. But yeah, the idea here is you're in the middle of your combos and then you pop parries, right? That's the thing. But parrying is not just for parrying. Parrying also works as a combo extension. So you go one, two, three, four, five, parry, one, two, three, four, and it, it's a bit of a different move set and it charges your gauge a little bit more. Now, if you notice to the bottom left-hand side, we have a gauge. The more you land the tax, the more that gauge charges. If you parry, the gauge charges way more. And why is this important? Because the more that gauge charges, the more damage you are going to deal. You can see it increasing right there. But also, if your gauge is charged, you gain access to a new moveset, which is whatever you do after a parry, whether that parry is successful or not, so like even if you just do this, it is going to be a different moveset. Now watch what it happens here. Boom, boom, boom. Whee! And that thing hits hard. And it also charges your gauge like madness. Whee! So your whole thing is charging up your gauge so that you can yeet your umbrella like this and deal tons of damage. It is glorious and brutally satisfying. Right? However, the, um, the Blade of Wagasa also has something which is it allows you to do a lot of aerial attacks. So let me actually exit here. Uh, we are not going to be training in this one because I have this one here. It's in the corner, but I have another one here that is a little bit more open for when I have to do aerial things, which is why I use the bow on this one. So you also have an aerial combo if you press your triangle or Y buttons. And then you can attack from the air. And as you can see, you can stay in the air quite a bit. 
And then you can also come charging back down. Which is pretty sweet. And you can parry stuff in the air. It still counts as a parry. And not only that, but it resets what you do in the air so that you can kind of like play a little bit of insect glaive almost. It's it's a pretty interesting weapon. I think that a lot of people are not going to vibe with it, but for me, I friggin' loved it. I think it's a really amazing weapon. Even if I'm not amazing at it, I have a lot of like fails when I'm playing it. But when you land those parries, when you see the um, when you throw the umbrella and you just see the numbers pop up like like a friggin' chainsaw. It feels great, dude. Heavily recommend. But again, it also is one of those things that I would only recommend to people who are willing to learn a little bit about pairing. Because if you don't parry at all with this weapon, you're probably not going to have that much of a good time. Oh yeah, also, this, this thing has like an actual dive. Let me show you. Watch this. Yeah! That's what happens when you parry something in the air, by the way. You can literally just like be in the air, you parry something, and then... Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. I like, I'm sorry. I like this weapon a lot, all right? Uh, anyway, let's swap things out. Um, and I think that the next one is going to be the cannon. Yeah, next one. Next up, we have the cannon. Then we have the claw blades. Then we have the Kurakuri staff. So let's take a look at a cannon here. I'm just going to equip a basic one. Okay, so how does the cannon work? So the cannon fires. There's a gauge on the lower left-hand side. There's two gauges, actually. So the gauge that's immediately above our health, that's how much you can fire. Every time you fire, it goes down. But you can press uh, square or on your Xbox, it would be X, I think. Uh, and that will place down one of these things. And that recharges it. So if you're firing on top of this blue thing, you can pretty much fire forever. Let me actually turn on the target dummy so that we can deal some damage. So you stand on this thing, and you can fire forever. And that thing doesn't go away, by the way. That'll stay in the ground for as long as you want. And you can place several of them. So, like, let's say I put another one here. And then I put... You can put down up to five of them. And they don't disappear. However, naturally, once you've put down five of them, you can't put any more. So then you have to hold uh, right trigger and uh, square X. And that will suck them up from the ground so that you can place new ones if you want to. Now, there is another gauge in there that you will have noticed, which is the overheat gauge. You don't want to let that gauge go all the way. However, you do want it to ri rise, okay? You want to get on the very cusp of overheating. And notice how our weapon is now red. That means that we are now ready to do a special attack, which is a mortar shot. And if we land that mortar shot on an enemy, Notice how that little circle is different. It's got like a red aura around it. Well, when you have one of those, you can come over here and you can just drain this sucker right up. And I know that I stayed here a long time, but you can actually dodge roll out of that animation and it can be done a little bit faster. But basically, once you have that, here's what you get to do. Right trigger and triangle is like, hey, buddy, what's up? Boom! And that's the cannon. You can also do regular mortar shots if you want, but they're not particularly useful. And they drop um, one of these things, it's called a keystone, the ener little energy fields. But the one that you really want to fire is when your overheat gauge is red. Oh yeah, this particular weapon also benefits greatly from something that I find really interesting, which is there's a glider that lets you glide, right? And if you have this weapon, you can go like, hoorah! <laughs> Which is also pretty fun, alright? It's pretty fun, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so yeah, the cannon is fun, but it has, uh, you know, in order to get to the laser, it can be a little bit tricky to actually land this mortar shot. It requires a bit of practice. Maybe it'll be easier if you use mouse and keyboard. I'm not gonna know, because I always use controller anyway. But yeah, that's the cannon. There's more to it than that, obviously, but it's a pretty fun weapon. Just do one laser for the finish. I mean, come on, we have to. Boom! Beautiful. Okay, now then, let's go ahead and let me show you guys the claw blade. Okay, listen, this is literally the weapon that I've played the least of and probably the weapon that I suck the most with, okay? But if you guys are curious, okay, so what is this weapon like, Rurikan? This is the Attack on Titan weapon. That's really all I can say about it. That's really all it is. This weapon might as well literally be friggin' Attack on Titan. So... You have duels, so you attack. You attack really fast. 
Uh, you can interrupt your attacks at any point in time by jumping by pressing A or X, and your character will jump. The character jumps, but this is like a special jump that has invincibility frames and does the little flippy thing. And the advantage of doing the flippy thing is that while you're in the air, you can press triangle or Y to do a different attack. Okay? Whee! So yeah, this, this is what it's all about with this weapon at, on a starting level, right? You're just like building up your gauge by spamming the monster with these attacks, right? Once you get all of your attacks in, you can press uh, right trigger. There are other ways of achieving this effect, but basically you're going to claw onto the monster. That's why it's called a claw blade. Now, if you've ever seen those uh, old Chinese movies, you know exactly what's going on. Or if you've seen Attack on Titan too, right? You can press right trigger and it's going to yeet your character towards the monster. And then you can press it again, yeet it again. And you can just slash the monster up, just like Attack on Titan. And different attacks will do different things. I haven't really mastered this weapon all that much, but the whole purpose of this is that at some point, you do this. Hiya! And that's the claw blade. So if you like that stuff, you like the high flying stuff and all that. Oh yeah, they can also do this crazy dodge while you're in the air. They have like a special dodge. Let me see if I can show you guys that. Yeah, like you can do uh, this. You can fly around like a freaking kite. Whee! So yeah, that's the claw blades. And now, for the finale, we go for what is what I think might end up being one of the more complicated weapons to learn. So I know that all the charge blade mains out there are like, aha, as my girl right there, the Karakuri Staff. Okay, so the Karakuri Staff is a very interesting weapon. Just go ahead, start up the dummy here. The way the Karakuri Staff works is you start out as a staff and you have a move set for a staff, right? Bonk, bonk, and then if you press triangle, it throws you in the air, does the thing. Then, you can swap it. Now, it's some kind of like tonfa looking thing. With blades. Right? Then, you can swap it, and now it's a big shuriken looking thing, which you can actually throw. And you can also attack with it. Right? And then, you can swap it again, and now it is a halberd. By the way, I'm, I'm not picking these forms specifically. They have a preset. So from the halberd, it's going to go back to the staff. From the staff, it goes to the tonfas. From the tonfas, it goes to the shuriken. And from the shuriken, it goes back to the halberd. Now, the halberd, you know, hits like you would expect. Actually, I think they call it a polearm, but whatever. It, it, it looks like a spear looking thing. But yeah, it's the karakuri staff. Now the guy's like, okay, so what do you do with it? That's it? It transforms and, you know, does these things? No. That also has one more form, which is this. Which I think they call it the Colossal Sword. Boom! But that was pretty, like, anticlimactic, right? Oh, so it just does this big 300 damage swing, as all the other things. Eh, it's a little bit anticlimactic. Yeah, that's because the way you're supposed to play it is, once again, if you guys remember the hammer, it had those flashes, so... Notice how there's a flash right there as well. Although, on this one, you don't need timing. You can mash the trigger button. So, timing is not required. You just need to know the flash is coming so that you know which animation you're going to be doing next. So, for instance, right now I'm with the staff, so I can do this. And then I swap, and it does an attack. And now, if you look at the gauge above our health, that gauge will have risen. And that is the point. Think of it like, you know how with the switch axe you want to hit the morphing attacks because it charges your gauge more? It's kind of the same thing. You're going to be wanting to morph in the middle of your attacks, and that is going to fill up your gauge. So I'm just going to be doing a bunch of attacks here to fill up the gauge to maximum and show you what happens then. Throw my thing. Do this. Swap it around. Do this. Throw it again. And swap it around. Uh, no, I messed it up. Oops. See, this this is one of the this is one of the problems that I personally have when I start playing um, this weapon is I start mashing buttons a little bit too hard, and you really can't. You can kind of get away with mashing, but it's not the most optimal way of playing. Okay. But anyways. Eventually, as you rise up your gauge, that gauge does deplete over time, so you have to pay attention to it. But, when you get your gauge full, and you're able to find 
at the right opening on the monster, you get to do this. Yeah! Yeah, did that sound like much? No, this is it! <laughs> yeah. That's the, um, that's the Karakuri staff right there. So, I think that this weapon takes, uh, at least for me right now still, it takes a significant amount of, um, skill to be able to, you know, predict all of the different movesets that are coming from all of the different transformations of your weapon. Like, I'm mashing the buttons here, but... You're not going to be always able to mash the buttons unless you're playing like maybe in multiplayer and people are controlling the mob. But yeah, that's going to be what you're expected to do with the Karakuri stuff. It also has aerial attacks like the other weapons, but I don't think they're... I don't think they're as impressive like you can do. Yay! You see, it's not really that big of a deal, so it's, it's whatever. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all of the weapons currently present in Wild Hearts. And now, like I said at the start of this video, I would like to hear from you. Which one of these weapons do you think is the one for you? And did my video end up changing your mind about which weapon you thought you liked the most? Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit it up with a like. If you did not enjoy it, hit it up with a dislike. Feedback is appreciated. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay strong, stay safe, subscribe, bell notification icon. Peace out.